Welcome back to homework help for lesson 8.2, evaluating trig functions graphically. We're going to be doing problems from 1, 2, and 3 from the homework. So quick, 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 before we dive in, basically we learned a couple new formulas today. Uh, our old ones, still with us, are sine theta y over r, cosine theta x over r, and then tangent theta y over x, but we also learned these three new trig ratios. They're pronounced cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And they're going to use the same letters, x, y, and r. It's just that they're the reciprocals of our first three. What do I mean by reciprocals? Well, reciprocal re uh, recall means that if I have like 1 over 2, the reciprocal of that would be 2 over 1. So you just flip-flop the numerator and the denominator. And so they're going to be paired up like this. The reciprocal of sine, y over r, would become r over y, and we call that secant. So in a way, sine and cosecant are tied together because they're reciprocals of each other. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. So while cosine is x over r, Secant is r over x. And then the reciprocal, lastly, of, um, of tangent would be cotangent. So while tangent is y over x, cotangent is x over y. Now, how are we going to remember these? This last pair is pretty easy, right? Tangent and cotangent. They just sound like they should be together. On the other hand, sine and cosecant you need to recall that these two stick together, whereas cosine and secant are pairs, so or reciprocals of one another. So how will we remember that? Well, if you notice, each pair, no matter which one we're looking at, the first, second, or third, each pair only has one co in it. Each pair has one co. What do I mean has one co? Well, let's read. This is sine. There's no co in front. So since sine doesn't have a co, it gets cosecant. So now there is one co in this pair. In the second pair, I have cosine. So it already starts with a co. Therefore, its partner is just secant. Not cosecant, just secant. Because you can only have one co in a pair. And then in the last one, we have tangent. Naturally, we'll go with cotangent. So he's got his co right there. So I'm going to highlight really quickly the cos. We've got cosecant, cosine, and cotangent. Just one co per pair. So that's our little uh, formula review. Last thing I want to go over is our quadrants. Re re remember that x and y can be positive or negative depending on the quadrant, but r is always positive. So if I'm in this quadrant over here in quadrant 1, we can just draw any point. To get to that point, my x, y coordinate, it doesn't really matter what it is. It could be positive 3, positive 5. It could be 2, 7. It doesn't matter what those numbers is as long as you remember that your x is positive and your y is positive because you have to go over on the x-axis and then up. So when you're drawing your angles in this quadrant, remember that your x and y are both positive and then r is always positive. If we're in the second quadrant... So we have an angle drawn like this, maybe. Think about how we would get to this point. Our x would have to be negative. So we can go backwards, and then our y would have to be positive. So negative x, positive y. In quadrant 3, we're going backwards on the x-axis. So it would be a negative x value, maybe like negative 1, maybe like negative 4. It doesn't matter as long as it's negative, but then to go down, you also have to have a negative y value. And so applying that same logic, when we draw our triangles, remember it's going to be a negative x and a negative y. And then finally, in the fourth quadrant, to get to a point like over here, you would have to go in the positive x direction, positive x, and then to reach that y value, you'd have to travel in the negative y direction. So please keep those in mind. And then finally, when you're labeling theta, it's always inside the triangle at the center. Let's begin. Problem 1D says, 
If cosine of b is 1 over root 2, find tangent of b. I don't care what problem we're dealing with. Our first step is always to label. So what do I mean by label? Well, cosine has a formula. So that means this 1 is going to be x, and this root 2 is r, because cosine of any angle is x over r. And it says, hey, find tangent of b then. Well, in order to find tangent, I know I'm going to need y over x. In order to get those values, I need to actually draw the triangle that's being given to me right here. So, let's see. The instruction said assume we're in, they actually said assume you're in quadrant number one, the first quadrant. So we're going to draw our angle in the first quadrant, and as always, drop the perpendicular to the x-axis. So this would be our angle B. Well, if x is 1, x is this side, my horizontal piece, and r, or my hypotenuse, is the square root of 2, I already now know my x is 1, my r is root 2, but to answer the question, which is tangent, I need y still. So let's label, let's solve for y using our Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Let's just plug in what we know. I know that x is 1, I need to solve for y, and then r is the square root of 2, and I'm going to square that. So that's 1 plus y squared equals, this will cancel the square root, so I'll get equals 2. Subtracting 1 on each side, I get y squared equals 1, and in my last step, y equals 1. So I've solved for y now, and I just want to check that it sh that my signs are correct. So since I am in the first quadrant, I know it's positive x, positive y. So we're good to go. So now I just need to put the pieces together. They're asking for tangent of b. Well, if tangent is y over x, I just found out that my y is 1. And my x, I already knew from before, was 1. So tangent of b, then, is 1 over 1, or just one, and that's our answer. Any, any time at all that you get stuck, make your first step to label what you know, and then draw the triangle. So let's do problem number two, same method. Only difference is this time they're telling me which quadrant I have to draw it in right here. So we're not going to assume it's in the first quadrant anymore. They're telling us where to draw it specifically. So they're giving me cosine is negative 4 over 5. If our first step is label, then we need to start right here. Cosine of an angle is always x over r. So now we'll draw what we know. Okay, which quadrant should we be in? Well, let's see what they say. They say your angle is going to be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. If this is 90 and this is 180, then we are going to be in the second quadrant. So we'll draw and drop the perpendicular. So x, coming back, x is negative 4. So I'll write x equals negative 4 along my horizontal leg. And r is 5, so I'll write that where r goes, which is always the hypotenuse. I'm given x, I'm given r, and they want me to solve for sine of the angle. So sine of the angle is always y over r. Currently, I know r, so I just need to find y, and then I can answer the question. So let's label y. y is going to be right over here, this piece. And I know, because it's in the second quadrant, that it's going to be, while well, x is negative, my y is going to be positive. So just keep that in mind. y is going to be positive. So we're going to solve using our Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. When we're doing uh, solving for side lengths, recall we're going to drop the negative. So we'll just put 4 squared, because that's my x. This distance is 4, plus y squared equals 5 squared. 
solving for y, we'll get 16 plus y squared equals 25, minus 16 on both sides to get y squared is equal to 9. And then in our final step, we'll take the square roots of both sides. So y equals 3. And once again, we have to remember that this is a positive y value. So that's our y. But to answer the question, the question, remember, was what's sine of the angle? So we just solved that y is 3, and then r, looking over here, is 5. If sine is y over r, then sine of this angle is 3 over 5. That's our answer. So we'll do one more problem, which is very, very similar. This one will use our reciprocal trig functions. So notice we're dealing now with cosecant and secant. If our first step is to label, then we need to remember secant theta is the reciprocal of which function? Sine, cosine, or tangent? So probably pretty easily you can rule out tangent, right? Because it's reciprocal, it's cotangent theta. Do you remember what trick we used to, to um, remember its partner, its pair? Secant doesn't have a co in front, so it needs a co. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And if cosine is x over r, then secant theta we can easily remember is r over x. So that means this is r over x. Well, what's missing? If I have just secant theta equals 2, then I need to fill in the over 1. 2 and 2 over 1 are the same thing. So now we know that r is 2, x is 1, and we have to draw it in the proper quadrant between 270 degrees. You should know that that's straight down, and 360 degrees, we're dealing with quadrant 4. Draw your angle, drop the perpendicular to the x-axis, show that you're creating a right angle there. Label. Okay, so R is 2. That's this side. X is 1. That's this side. So then we need to solve for Y. We're going to use our formula again. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, and we'll fill in what we know. r is 2, so 2 squared. Okay, so solving for y, I get 1 squared is 1 plus y squared equals 4. I want to get y squared by itself right now. So minus 1 on both sides and get y squared equals 3. In the last step to solve for y, we'll take square roots on both sides and get y equal to the square root of 3. But we have to remember before we write our final answer that in this quadrant, y is negative. We go in the positive x direction to the right, and we go down. So that would be negative square root 3. Please, 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 please don't forget your negative. So now we can answer the question to find cosecant of theta. So cosecant, since it already has the co, it's the reciprocal of sine. If sine is y over r, then cosecant is r over y. That's how I remember it anyway. So cosecant theta is r over y. So my r is 2 and my y is negative square root 3. Well, we can't leave a square root in the denominator, so we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3. To get rid of this square root, we're going to rationalize the denominator. And we get, multiplying straight across, and then the numerator, 2 times square root 3 is 2 root 3. And in the denominator, negative, well, negative times positive is going to be negative. And then root 3 times itself is just 3. And this will be our final answer, negative 2 root 3 over 3. All right, I hope you found that helpful, and I'll catch you guys next time.